Now, my lecture today is called on the gift of rights or the gift of rights. Now, the gift of rights is a go show or the writings of the 13th century Buddhist, Japanese Buddhist sage Nichiren, Nichiren Shonen. Let's get into our lecture. Now, to understand Buddhism, first of all, you really need to get a background in the history of Buddhism because Buddhism became infected or corrupted with racism. Now, let me kind of explain it. In, in religion, there was the Brahmins from India whose religion affected the world. It became known as Brahmanism. Over the years, a Brahman later became known as Abraham. It means a Brahman. Abraham later on became the father of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. So when you look at the religions of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, it is the religion that was started by a Brahman. Abraham was a Brahman from India. Now, the Brahman teachings also infected the Buddhist religion. The Brahmins created a new Buddhism based on race, culture, and language. This new Buddhism that, they, that the Brahmins created was called Mahayana Buddhism. And the language of Mahayana Buddhism was Sanskrit. Sanskrit was the language of the Brahmins, and in Sanskrit, the Brahmins dealt in racism because they were the ones who created the first sanctified religious racism called caste. They set up a caste system where the blacks were at the bottom and the whites were at the top, and this racism went on to affect the whole world. They did the same thing in Buddhism, in that what the Brahmins did in their teaching of Buddhism, they made it a point to extricate all black history from Buddhism. Now, this is in the Buddhism called Mahayana Buddhism. Now, we who study Buddhism, we practice a Buddhism called Nichiren Buddhism. Now, Nichiren Buddhism is a little different because in the 13th century, there was a Japanese sage by the name of Nichiren. Nichiren went and he studied all of the Buddhisms in Japan and he wanted to know why are there so many different Buddhisms and why is it that Japan is suffering so bad. So Nichiren studied all of the sutras or all of the teachings of the Buddha and he came to the conclusion that the ultimate and absolute teachings of Shakyamuni Buddha lies in the Lotus Sutra. So what Nichiren did, Nichiren challenged the racist Mahayana Buddhism and taught that the only true Buddhist teachings is that of the Lotus Sutra. So that's what Nichiren did. Now Nichiren not only challenged the Buddhism of Japan, but Nichiren made the point in a go show. It's from it's called Letter from Sado and Banishment to Sado. Now in these go shows, Nichiren said that he was from the family of the Chandalas. The Chandalas were the oppressed black people of India who they treated worse than slaves. They were not even in a caste, but they were in what is called an outcast. And Nichiren identified. Nichiren says, I am from a Chandala. I'm from the family of the Chandalas. So Nichiren certainly brought into Buddhism, he brought a different kind of Buddhism that dealt with humanity and dealt with equality. Now, what has happened to the Buddhist religion even in the Nichiren sense? Now, there are Nichiren sets that, I, that I'm associated with. The first one is called the SGI, the second one is called Nichiren Shoshu, and the third one is called Nichiren Shu. All of these Nichiren sets 
are affected or have been infected with racism and that they extricate or purposefully remove all black history and culture or any rather do of black history. Now, one of the things that you will learn about Nichiren's Buddhism, and I want you to see, the object of worship is called a Gohanzan. And Nichiren, in order to show that he was not racist, Nichiren put black gods on the Gohanzan. Now, what you have in the Nichiren sets, the Nichiren sets purposefully have extricated or hidden all of this black history. We at the Proud Black Buddhist World Association challenges the Japanese racist assault on black history. Now, our lecture today is called The Gift of Rights. Now, Nichiren means Sun Lotus. That's what the name Nichiren means, Sun Lotus. Nichiren believed in the Lotus Sutra as the highest teachings of Buddhism. Now, one of the most awesome go shows that Nutrin wrote, it's called The Gift of Rice. And that's what our lecture is about, The Gift of Rice. Now, The Gift of Rice go show actually not only turned the Buddhism in Japan during the time of Nutrin upside down, The Gift of Rice go show turns the Buddhism that's being taught by the Japanese sects like the SGI, Nichiren Shoshu, and Nichiren Shu. This gold show turns the, their teachings upside down. Now, one of the things I want you to do that will be exciting get your priest or get your SGI leader or grab your book, and I would like for you to study the gold show the gift of rice or listen or research what the other Japanese has wrote about the gift of rice in contrast and compare it to what we who are proud black Buddhists tell about this go show. We challenge any of you if there is anybody out there who can explain the gift of rice better or challenge us on the way we teach it then we would certainly stop teaching Buddhism and we become, we become their disciple. So what I want you to do, I want you to study. Nichiren says, writes in the Go Show, exert yourself in the two ways of practice and study, for without practice and study, there can be no Buddhism. Now, let's get off into this lecture. It's called the Gift of Rice. Now, what happened was, the name speaks for itself. A person gave Nichiren Shonen some rice and some other gifts. And what Nichiren Shonen did in the Gold Show, he took the time to explain Buddhism by using an everyday example such as a gift of rice. Now, I want you to get into it. Now, Nichiren realized the essence of the teaching of Shakyamuni Buddha was the Lotus Sutra. Now, please understand that Mahayana Buddhism is based on Sanskrit. Sanskrit means removing all black history, culture, and language. Now, in the Go Show, the real aspect of the the the, the Go Show, true aspect of all phenomena, it reads, "Quote." Ever since the long distance past, I have been teaching and converting the multitude. There should be no discrimination among those who propagate the five characters of Myoho Rinke Kyo in the latter day of the law, be there, be they men or women. Now please understand that the Buddha Shakyamuni writes. From the distant past, he has been teaching and converting this multitude. Shakyamuni made clear that there should be no discrimination in the latter day of the law. 
Now, what I want you to do, I want you to look at Nitrin Shoshu. These suckers not only do not have a woman priest, they only have Japanese priests. So obviously, there is some discrimination there. Now, let's get into this lecture. Now, in this lecture, we are like a black radio station. We're not racial, but we're cultural, and we bring a cultural twist and turn to teaching a lecture because those of you who are African American, you want to, many of you want to be able to have a teaching that's done in a language or in a format that you can relate to or that you can identify with. I have been a Buddhist for 45 years and what I see or what I've noticed in Buddhism, I've noticed a lot of racism. Now, in order to explain it, I wonder how many of you are familiar with the former little child star. Her name is Raven Simone. Now, Raven Simone is a co-host of one of the popular morning television series called The View. Now, Raven Simone kind of express what the Japanese express. She's kind of like the Japanese in that she discriminates. Now, Raven Simone was a little darling black child that used to play on the Cosby Show. But one of the things that Raven said, Raven says that she would never hire a person with a black sounding name. Now, the reality in America is that many black people are not hired because of their names or because of their race. And what you have is a young lady who grew up in a privileged environment, and now that she is up and supported by white people, she can go and turn on black people and say, I'm not going to hire you because you got some ghetto name. Now, no person or no child really names themselves. Their parents name them. They cannot help which culture that they're born into, but just because they're born into a particular culture, they have to be discriminated against, and Raven certainly discriminates against black people. Now, you have the same thing in the Nichiren Buddhist sets, the SGI, Nichiren Shoshu, Nichiren Shu, they teach a Buddhism that extricate all black history and culture. So what happens is you do not get a broad or a diversified or a true historical and broad understanding of Buddhism. Now, take a look at this picture. Now, this is a picture, now, and I want you to see it right here. This is a picture of the black Nichiren Shu female priest, Mukei Shonen. Now, her mother is Japanese and her father is black. Now, this sister, I understand, is a Nichiren Shu bishop. She was featured, featured on CNN News in a segment called Black in America. Now, when you see this Nichiren Shu black female priest, she's got that bald head. And she is a shock to black women and men. The one thing you don't mess with black people about is that about our hair because we've had so many challenges about our hair. But one of the interesting things I want you to note that what you see today, you will see a bouquet shonen. Now, the point is that many black people looked into Buddhism because of Tina Turner. Tina Turner gave us a unique and cool Buddhist image than you get from a Mukai Shonen. In my personal case, I made the decision to join Nitrin Shu under Mukai Shonen. I wrote a letter and I asked the Nitrin Shu leaders what is their policy regarding black people. And their representative, who was once my closest friend, who used to live in the house with me, 
who I supported as a friend and a brother for many years, when I wrote that letter to the Nitrin Shoe Temple and I asked those leaders about their policy regarding black people, I was told by my friend Shaka, who you see here in the picture, Shaka wrote me a nasty letter and told me that I was no longer welcome in his house. What you have among the Japanese sects is that you have a bunch of people who practice what is called cultural imperialism. They don't believe in diversity. They believe in a Japanese imperialism and that they want to be culturally dominant. So you're not going to see a Tina Turner in the forefront, but what you're going to see, you're going to see this African-American priest with the bald head, and you're going to see this image of this half black, half Japanese priest, as opposed to seeing a Tina Turner or learning a different kind of Buddhism. Now, this lecture, The Gift of Rice, this ghost show, Nitron radically breaks away from not only Mahayana Buddhism in the 13th century Japan, in this ghost show, Nitron breaks away from all of the Japanese Nitron sets today. Just read this ghost show and you will learn that the Japanese sets like the SGI, Nitron Shoshu, Nitron Shu, and others are not practicing the correct teachings of Buddhism in relationship to the Lotus Sutra. See, the correct teachings is the Lotus Sutra. I want SGI leader Mr. Bobby Hudson. Now, he is a black Buddhist. This brother got a website and this brother is around here promoting Sanskrit language and I wrote this brother, I said, Bobby, what you are promoting is racism. Sanskrit language is the time when they separated Buddhism by race, culture, and language. And Sanskrit language was the language of the Brahmins. And those SGI, I remember the white SGI, I remember told Bobby Hudson, said, man, go ahead on and promote this. Promote this thing called Chinese Sanskrit. And I said, brother, I ain't no such language as no... Chinese Sanskrit, but what happens is you have an organization like the SGI that is purposefully misleading people and you got a brother and you got these sisters and all these people in SGI and you got African Americans that's misleading their people. Now, the title of the ghost, ghost show says it all. Nitrin Shonen receives some rights and other gifts. Now, Nitrin breaks down the practicality of Buddhism in regards to the Lotus Sutra. Please understand that the essence of Shakyamuni's Buddhism is the Lotus Sutra. Now, let us be clear. The SGI, Nitrin Shoshu, Nitrin Shu, do not teach the correct Nitrin Buddhism because they do not practice the tenets of the Lotus Sutra. Now, in this Gosho lecture, or in this go show, the person gave Nitrin some needed food. Nitrin takes the time to explain the value of life. We live life and many of us have a hard time. Nitrin writes, quote, Life is the foremost of all treasures. It is expounded that even the, tre uh, even the treasures of the entire major world system cannot equal the value of one's body and life. Even the treasures that fill the major world system are no substitute for life. Life is like a lamp and food is like oil. When oil is exhausted, the lamp goes out and without food, life will cease." Unquote. Now, what Nitrin is telling us that the greatest thing that we have is our life and what makes the difference about life is our attitude. See, there is a condition in you called Buddhahood 
which is the highest life condition that we try to reach. Now, let me give you an example of a high life attitude based upon a movie that many of us have seen. How many of you saw the movie The Color Purple? Now, in the movie The Color Purple, there was Seeley and there was Mr. Now, there's a scene in the movie where Seeley has finally broke away from Mr. and she was leaving this dirty, low-down, rotten dude. And boy, when she was leaving, uh, Mr. gonna get his last words. And Mr. said, "Why?" Wow, Mr. said, he said this to us. He said, you ugly, you, you poor, and you black. And Seely came back with boy with a booty, what I call a booty zinger. Seely said, I'm poor, black, I may even be ugly, but dear God, I'm here. I'm here. What the moral of this comment is that the story that despite her circumstances, of what she was. She was poor and she might be ugly, but she said she is here. And those of us who practice Buddhism and those of us who face challenges in life, despite what our circumstances are, we are here. We might not have the car we want, the house we want, the circumstances that we got, but the most important thing that we have is the world's greatest treasure, and that is life. And that's what Nietzsche says. See, Nietzsche breaks it down as to how, in Buddhism, and in this Go show, how can we become a Buddha? Now, the hell with what a Daisaki Kato says, or a high priest tell you how to become a Buddha. You should study and read what Nietzsche says. Now, Nitron writes in this ghost show, in the gift of rice, he says, quote, However, as for the matter of becoming a Buddha, ordinary people keep in mind the words, quote, earnest resolve, and thereby become Buddhas. Now, please understand that Nitron teaches us that the way to become a Buddha is with earnest resolve. Earnest resolve has nothing to do with whether you were the Japanese set, or has nothing to do with the Daigo Hanthan, or some other nonsense that you were taught about Buddhism. Nietzsche explains what earnest resolve is in the Go So he writes, quote, when we carefully consider what exactly Ernest Rizal refers to, it is the doctrine of observing the mind. When we inquire into what exactly the doctrine of observing the mind refers to, it means that offering one's only robe to Lotus Sutra is equivalent to pulling off one's skin, and that in time of famine, offering the food that is the only means of sustaining life that day to the Buddha is offering one's life to the Buddha. In common sense terms, what Nietzsche means by earnest resolve is to develop the mind of faith or observing the mind or to put your mind in faith and trust in the law of cause and effect. See, the Gift of Rice is an awesome Go Show. The Go Show, this Go Show turns the Japanese Buddhist sects upside down. This is the Go Show of Go Shows that busts the Japanese nutrient sets out. What I want you to do is get your most knowledgeable person and have them to check this Go Show out. Now, my friend in Sacramento, California, I want you to check this out and I want my Buddhist scholar friend who I don't talk too much about, Mr. Adam Billups, who is a very brilliant Nitrin Shoshu Buddhist, and I want even the black female Nitrin 
uh, female priest McKay Shona to comment. I don't want any of you SGI, SGI members to have your leaders to comment on the next quote. If they can answer that shows that I'm wrong, or if they can answer this better than what I would do, I would give up preaching and teaching Buddhism and become their disciple. Now, in the Go Show, the gift of rights, it reads, quote, The true path lies in the affairs of this world. The Golden Light Sutra states, quote, to have a profound knowledge of this world is itself Buddhism. He goes on further, the Nirvana Sutra states, all of the non-Buddhist scriptures and writings in society are themselves Buddhist teachings, not non-Buddhist teachings. He goes on further. He says, when the great teacher Milo compared these passages with the one from the sixth volume of the Lord Sutra that reads, quote, No worldly affairs of life or work are ever contrary to the true reality. He revealed their meanings and pointed out that although the first two sutras are profound, since their meanings is still shallow and fails to approach that of the Lotus Sutra, they relate to secular matters in terms of Buddhism, whereas the Lotus Sutra explains that in the end, secular matters are the entirety of Buddhism. So ladies and gentlemen, the way these people are teaching Buddhism, they are not teaching Buddhism according to the Lotus Sutra because it is the Lotus Sutra that teaches us. That secular matters, that is our everyday life, is the entirety of Buddhism. So it's not about going to Japan or getting with some Japanese or meditating in the mountains. Buddhism is our everyday life. Now let's go over these points one at a time. And there are four important points of what he says. Number one, now this is what Shakyamuni uh, wrote. Or what was written with Chakamuni talk. He says what? The Golden Light Sutra states, To have a profound knowledge of this world is itself Buddhism. First point. The second point, The Nirvana Sutra states, All of the non-Buddhist scriptures and writings of society are themselves Buddhist teachings and not non-Buddhist teachings. The third point, the sixth volume of the Lotus Sutra that reads, quote, No worldly affairs of life or work are ever contrary to the true reality. Number four, again, the sixth volume of the Lotus Sutra reads, quote, The first two sutras are profound since their meaning is still shallow and fails to approach that of the Lotus Sutra. They relate secular matters in terms of Buddhism, whereas the Lotus Sutra explains that in the end, secular matters are the entirety of Buddhism. Our everyday life, our jobs, our careers, our marriages, everything that we do that is Buddhism. Our secular life is Buddhism. The Lord of Sutra teaches us that secular matters are the entirety of Buddhism. The Japanese and others want to deal with secular matters in terms of Buddhism. It is the Lord of Sutra that teaches that secular matters are the entirety of Buddhism. Buddhism is our everyday life and not some SGI Nichiren Shoshu, Nichiren Shu, esoteric teachings. True Buddhism is your everyday life and not some cultural exercises. Buddhism means putting the law, putting faith in the law and not in persons. That is the true Buddhism. I am Anthony Alp Elmer. <laughs>
<laughs> whoa, whoa. We in Memphis, Tennessee, the home of the blues. Since Memphis, Tennessee is the home of the blues, the blues is a part of the Lotus Who Choose. And since blues is a part of the Lotus Who Choose, let's preach the Lotus Who Choose with a little blues. I woke up this morning, the things weren't right, the things weren't right. We fall on tonight. Got to the job. And things weren't cool. I got the jet leads on them good old Tavo Cruz. 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 Oh, I got the chain, the good old double cool. I can't wait to get home and pull off these shoes and tie on the door. Give me some double cool. Hey, come on, double cool. Come on, y'all, double cool. Hey, I'm gonna get rid of these double cool shoes all alone. I don't tell you something. Don't. Knock your ring gate go. It's the way the red karma go. Knock your ring gate go. It's the way the red karma go. Knock your ring gate go. It's the way the red karma go. Knock your ring gate go. It's the way the red karma go. Knock your ring gate go. It's the way the red karma go.